White House Insider segment tonight after being hammered for not attending the Paris anti-terror demonstration, President Obama announced a summit to counter violent extremism. That will take place on February 18th in Washington. Today, the release of five imprisoned Muslim terrorists from Gitmo was a topic of conversation. How could the president release five more Gitmo detainees, detainees originally from Yemen? Because there is a uni uh, unanimous recommendation from his national security team. Isn't that still a problem? Six percent of these detainees wind up going back into terrorism, could kill people in Paris or Washington. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is, and it's uh, certainly why this administration continues to pursue uh, a very aggressive counterterrorism strategy. All right, joining us now from D.C., Ed Henry. How, what percentage of uh, detainees that are released go back to fight, did you say? I, so I Republican John McCain, uh, Kelly Ayotte, others have claimed it's 30 percent go back to the battlefield. The White House insists it's 6 percent. Uh, they have independent analysis backing that up. Uh -huh. um, so bottom line, though, is at what I was trying to press Josh Ernest on is even if it is 6 percent and John McCain is wrong, 6 percent of these terrorists going back to the battlefield, yeah, it's as gonna we be saw people painfully die. in Paris, right. could be real problem. OK, um, what is this summit now, uh, the extremist summit? What is that? Uh, it's going to be here in Washington, and, and interesting, one of the things when we pressed Josh Ernest on that this week, he said that they want to talk about, quote, strategies we can employ to better promote pluralism, inclusion, and resilience in communities all across the country. Well, those and are this big is words, why, Henry. Did you understand right. those words? Did, did, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm struggling a little, and, and, and that's why Very I pressed him and said, why, why didn't you call this a summit? on Islamic extremism, and Josh Ernest said, look, there's other forms other, of other extremism. There's other extremism, right. and uh, right. we have and to deal with And there's some others. That, you know, right. we, we but do. obviously, Islamic extremism is the one that is threading, unfortunately, tragically, all these incidents in recent memory. Of course. Uh, whether it's the Boston bombing, uh, everybody knows Paris, that. Canada, Australia. But no, period. there's there, they'll go back to McVeigh and, and all of this other business. Now, I believe, this is what I believe. I believe that President Obama is well aware that uh, the American people um, think that he's far out on this issue. Fox News poll shows that. Uh, it's not even close anymore. People don't feel that he's fighting the jihad the way he should be. I think he knows it. I don't think he cares. I, I think he just says, I got less than two years left. I'm going to try to get my projects done, whatever they may be, on the social front, and let the jihad pass down to whoever else is going to be president. I, th I really believe that's what the man, that's his mindset. I think I agree with you that he doesn't care about the criticism. I agree with you because his behavior, you can just, the facts are there. Over the last week or two, uh, he has continued pushing these State of the Union proposals on the domestic front despite right. the terror attacks in Paris. So you're right about that part. But the idea, he, if you're also saying, I just want to make sure I have the language right, if you're saying that he doesn't care about Islamic terror at all and he doesn't care about the potential for attacks here, I obviously no, disagree with that. No, there's a difference. There's that, a difference yeah. between playing defense and playing offense. OK, what Josh Ernest told you, a robust counter uh, terrorism operation is true, because if there is another 9-11 on American soil, President Obama goes down in history as the worst president of all time. Uh, he's down there with Buchanan and Johnson. Um, well, so, yes, they're on defense. Do they want to defeat the jihad? No. Well. Okay, I agree with you that they're on defense now. Where I would say he has been on offense before was taking out bin Laden, drone strikes in those Yemen, are, those Somalia, small et ball. That's small ball. Okay. That's not big picture stuff. And let me finish the thought, which is that as recently as September, the president talked about being on offense in Yemen and held it up in a speech to the American people, I think it was September 10th, as a success story. The, 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 the counter-terror policies in Yemen. And look at what yeah. has happened. And in fact, it isn't. one of the brothers who was a mastermind last week in Paris, we now know, uh, trained in Yemen. Well, so that's just what I just told it Mr. Barron sure. came, just came back from Yemen. It's not a success story. The truth is that ISIS and Al-Qaeda are getting stronger. They're killing more people. And the president isn't, doesn't have a strategy to. They're to do not it. on the run anymore, that's for sure. Okay. Ed Henry.